Okay, welcome everybody. I'm Barb Owen and you are at, first of all, you're at the Creating Faces channel um, inside my studio on a very dreary autumn day and it is Drama Free Friday just like it is every Friday. <laughs> well, that's, what we, that's what we always hope for, that it's always going to be drama free. That's the intention. Because as I say every Friday, um, or I try to without without fail i try to say you know no matter what's going on in the world there's nothing we can do about it right now for the next couple of hours so let's just enjoy and see what happens shall we so yeah <sighs> i am just taking a breath because it's just i should sit back i feel like i'm because <laughs> it's just been a busy couple of days for me Anyway, it's so nice to have everybody joining, and um, if you're watching the recording, I'll thank you for doing that as well. So I'm just having a little cup of tea, and um, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do something. Can you see what we're gonna do? <laughs> we're going from Christmas back to Halloween this this uh, this week. And I have no idea how this is going to work out, so we're just going to roll with it and see. Because I thought it might be something fun. But what I want to show you first is um, the workshop that's going on over here. I'm going to see if I can get a shot of it for you. Now, I can't zoom in or anything. But can you see? And I'm hand holding the camera, so it's shaky. But can you see over there? The lineup of the guys. Pardon the shaky camera. Anyway, that is the lineup of the guys that are in the workshop over there. <coughs> Rain says she really enjoyed her classes with joggles. Oh, really? Oh, that's great, Rain. How cool is that? Hey, Linda. Two Lindas so far that I see. There might be more before it's over with. Yeah, we have quite a lineup going on over there at the moment. <laughs> that is truly Santa's workshop over there. Yes. They are in all various stages of development. Uh, all the way from just the carving stage to the um, painting. Some of them are nearing finishing. Yeah, so they're getting there. They're getting there. I probably, if all goes well, I probably will paint tonight late. I don't record those streams, but you're welcome to, you know, keep an eye on if I'm streaming. It depends on if somebody else is. Because sometimes somebody jumps on Friday nights, you know, there seem to be several different people that like to stream on Friday night. Perfect. You know, I, I'm happy to sit here and paint while you guys do something else, too. So... All right, I don't think I have a thing. I don't think I have one thing as an announcement, which is like some kind of a record. Um, so what we're going to do is today, I thought it would be fun to just carve a pumpkin. I thought it would be fun. So, and you'll see why in a minute. Now, I'm not any master pumpkin carver. Let me just tell you that right now. Straight up. I am not. Okay. So, let's see if you can get get Sorry, I'm trying to get my lights off. Probably we won't get it dark enough to, for you to be able to see it. There we go. Can you kill this one over here? Can you kill that one? Okay. So, maybe you can... I got one more thing I can do to get it dark enough. Okay, that should do it. <laughs> Can you tell? Can you see it? 
Now, it's not dark, dark, dark. And we're on a camera that's not, you know, super duper high quality. But can you see it? It's a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, it's a sponsor. So you can kind of get the idea. Okay, so we're going to carve a pumpkin. So now I have to go back and I have to turn all the lights back on. Unlike a professional studio where they could dim the lights and then bring them all back up at once, I don't, it, mine doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to let this kitty sit over here and watch us. And we have, I have another pumpkin here. And I've already taken its innards out most of them there's a couple stragglers but uh, when you carve a pumpkin one of the things that's handy is if you carve a notch when you're doing the lid carve a notch in the lid because then you know how to put it back on the pumpkin and you don't have to guess and it just goes right back on to the top of the pumpkin see right there Hi, Dar. So that just goes right on there. Hi, Cindy. Thanks. Um, and when you do this, when you carve the top of the pumpkin, and this may be elementary for anybody, but when you carve the pumpkin lid out, you want to carve it at an angle inward. So your knife needs to go at an angle inside because then you can see... You can see how the how it angles. That way then it will sit inside and as the pumpkin dries up, which it will, um, it still has a chance of staying up where it belongs. So it is. It's really easy to put the lid on. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to set this aside. And I'm going to show you, I mean, this is, this is a throwback to quite a few years ago, <laughs> quite a few. So we're going to see how this works. Um, <clears throat> Rain says she did it wrong the first time and the lid fell inside the pumpkin. Yep, you can do that. Absolutely. Okay, so this this is a, truly a throwback to, I don't know how many years ago, but it's at least 20 years ago. Well, yeah, probably. And they had, they meaning the powers that be, Hobby Lobby and Michaels and stuff like that, came out with these pumpkin carving kits. And this one was $3.97 at the time I bought it. So it's been a long time ago since I bought these. And it came with three, three or four, I guess it was four tools. And it had, um, it seems like, I guess that's all this one was. This was just tools. And then it had ideas on the back. Okay, so you got different kinds of pumpkin ideas and the tools. Well, then they came out with patterns. And... So that was kind of nice because then you could, and we obviously carved a bunch of these a long time ago. Let's see, maybe, I'm trying to think if this came with something, but I don't know. There was a, you know, there's a pattern book and instructions and, and then there were various patterns in the, in the books. And then, of course, they came out with you know, something a little more fancy where you got the tools and some patterns if you wanted to carve them that way. So we got, you know, <laughs> of course we had to get an extra set because I, as I recall, my son was still at, 
still living here at home. And, you know, we had to have tools for him and his girlfriend and his friends and whoever came over. So we had to buy multiple sets. And then I wasn't sure I could find my tools. And so this year I bought this set of tools. So this is how they're coming now. And it had a pumpkin gut spoon in it. Oh, good, Dar. You are welcome. You are welcome. I'm glad you I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked your surprise. Um Okay, I'm I'm reading chat for just a minute. Cindy says she always had they always had a pumpkin festival there with hundreds of pumpkins carved and judged and displayed on Main Street. Well, Cindy, don't uh, don't don't judge me too harshly about my pumpkin carving skills, okay? <laughs> Just saying, don't judge me too harshly. <laughs> so anyway, this is the set. I went ahead and bought this set, and this time it was $4.99. Um, and I got it at the grocery store, and it comes with a, a um, different kind of patterns. And these are, hey, Fran, and these have the um they're like stencils so you punch out the um the parts that you're going to actually carve out you're going to punch those out so these are different different kind of stencil uh the patterns are a little more mm, well this one is kind of a cool one i would say that they tend to be a little more elementary in design but the, i think they're good for kids and you don't get very many patterns but Anyway, that was available at the grocery store. Now, my son, being the kind of person that he is, he took a pattern or a picture of himself. This was a photograph that he did. Oh, Dar, no worries. No worries. No worries. Believe me, I have plenty of Santas, Dar. I overrun with Santas. So if you don't even send it, it will never be a problem. If you do send it, great. <laughs> oh, would you... Claus man? Claus man. Yeah. Would you disconnect that phone, please? Thank you. Claus man is in the studio here. I forgot to take the phone off the hook. Thanks. So anyway, he... Um, this is my son from quite a few years ago he did a photo shoot this was back when he was modeling and I believe this was one of the photos from his photo shoot at that time which I've truthfully forgotten a little bit if he's if he jumps in the chat you can ask him about this anyway he took this image this is him and he took this image and through Photoshop converted it into I think it was a stamp I believe was the um, what do they call that effect I think it's an effect and I think that's what he did if Eileen's here she'll probably know what it is Eileen is here so she probably know which one it is anyway he turned it into this which is very 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 detailed right and um, I can't remember I guess he carved out the black pieces um, I truly don't remember anyway it was a stinking cool pumpkin, I gotta say. And when he started carving it, I'm like, there is no way. There is no way that this, he's gonna quit before he gets it done. He did not. He got it done, and it was unbelievable. I have photos of it someplace, but I don't know where they are. So, anyway. Okay, so it, this, is, this is the easy way to carve a pumpkin that looks rather... Um, intimidating there's Garfield I mean they've got some really cute cute designs and if you you don't wreck the design because I'm going to use this one this is the one I showed you okay but we have two sponsors so you know we have to have two um, we have to have two pumpkins to honor both sponsors don't you know well this is the old one this is the newer one and you don't wreck the pattern as long as you're a little careful. 
It's a stamp made in Photoshop. Thank you, Eileen. Okay. All right, so what you do is the, um, the patterns will have, usually will have some places that indicate that you should cut them, and that's just so that you can take this flat paper and make it a little more, uh, so it will conform a little bit more to the roundness of the pumpkin. And this was copyright 90, 1993, so these have been around a while. All right, so we're going to take this pumpkin, or, or this pattern, and I've already used this once a long time ago, probably in 1993. Um, oh, that's cool, Jean. Jean says that similar to one uh, that her sister did of Michael Jackson and his thriller werewolf face. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, we can't diss one of the sponsors. That is true. Uh, this kind, I will tell you that the paper that's best to use for this is newsprint. So, here's a sheet of newsprint that I have. And so, if I wanted to save this pattern, I could use my light box and put, the, put this over the light box, which I didn't get out today because I truly just didn't have time to do it. Um, I guess I could still do it. Hmm... Maybe we'll do that, just so you can see the process, because I think the light box will make it work. Let me go in behind door number one. Wish me luck, people. Wish me luck and get my light box, okay? Okay. Oh, me too, Rain. I don't like pumpkin guts much at all. I don't like pumpkin guts much at all. Okay, now, let's hope this doesn't blow your eyeballs out. I'm going to attempt to cover this up completely before I turn it on. Okay, that should work. Okay, let's see how this goes. If it doesn't work, I'll turn it off and we'll just be done with it. Oh, yeah, cool beans. Okay, so what I'm working on here, this is called a light pad. The surface is called a light pad, and I don't have a link for you because I forgot to get one because I wasn't intending to use it. But those of you watching the recording, there will be uh, a link either in the description box below the video, uh, or if you're watching it on my website, which is howtogetcreative.com, you'll see there's always a box underneath with all the links in it. Okay? So... Here is what you do. You just look through the light pad and then you can just go through. And make yourself a fresh copy. Uh, of course, you could do this on a copy machine or, you know, on your printer. If it has a copy function, you could do that. But you really want, I think, a lighter weight paper. And newsprint is a really good choice. So if you're interested in a light pad, I'll give you some information, as I said, in the description and so forth with the recording. Um, there are different kinds of light boxes. Of course, you could use a window, like a, 
you know, just a glass window with light coming through it. Obviously, you have to do it in the daylight. Or you can use a piece of glass with a light shining beneath it to do a similar thing. There are also different kinds of light boxes that are plastic and so forth, and you can use those. This is a light pad, which is covered with glass, and it's thin, and so it's easy to work on. And the light is so nice and bright that it covers, or it illuminates, through just about anything. I'm going to make these whiskers a little fatter because I remember those were these little fine details are a little challenging. Okay, so you see how how you can do that. Okay, and then you turn it off and there is your pattern. Well, I should probably put in the lines where they intend for you to cut it also. Because they've already done the thinking, so why should I think again when somebody's already willing to do it for me? And the name of this or the name of this pattern is Pretty Kitty. Hey, Lindsay. And anybody that I missed, welcome, welcome. Okay, so there is our pattern. Okay, does anybody have any questions? All right. Let me move the light pad out of the way. But these light pads come in different sizes. This is the 9 by 12. They also come in an 11 by 17, which is a big motor scooter, let me tell you. But this is a really nice piece of equipment. And you can see how, how very thin it is. And it's flat. It's the same thickness all the way around. So, very nice. Okay, let me set this off to the side and we'll get started. If you have any questions or comments in the live chat and you want me to see it, be sure you put a uh, put them in caps for me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on these lines just so it'll fit on the surf surface of the pumpkin a little bit more easily. Now, the advantage to newsprint is that it's really thin paper. The disadvantage to newsprint is it's really thin paper. So, it will conform, but as it starts getting wet with pumpkin juices, it will um, start disintegrating on you. Although it dries out, and then you can reuse it. Oh, thanks, Teresa. Teresa, I told Teresa I was. Hi, Sandra. Um, at the light boxes or that light pad is really nice. I think it's worth the investment. Okay, did I miss any questions? <laughs> okay, maybe not. All right. So we're, I'm not exactly sure which camera to use as I do this, so we're going we're gonna to go for this one and see how it goes, okay? I have several camera choices. I'm going to take the lid off and let it just kind of hang out over there. 
I have several camera choices, so if the view isn't good one way, we'll, um, we'll try it with another one. Eventually, we'll get one where you guys can see. Oh, good. You got it, Sandra? Good. Good. Okay, this... Th now, this is the challenge. Maybe I'll try one of my, my ironing boards. I'm going behind door number one again, people. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to see, what I'm trying to do is to get the pumpkin elevated enough that you guys can see it. So we're just kind of going with the flow here today because, you know, that's how it rolls here sometimes. On a live show, that's what happens. Just trying to get it angled a little bit. Which may or may not happen. Well, we'll just roll with it and see how it goes. I'll eventually have it in my lap when I'm actually doing the carving. Sponsors are being good, but that's because I'm also going in there going tss, tss, before they before they can shoot out of the room. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. And since I'm doing this, you know, with you guys, there's uh, no telling how it's going to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the ears are the, the uppermost edge. So I need to leave a little bit of room up here at the rim of the pumpkin so I don't cut that through. And I just use straight pins and pin it. Okay, let me look at it and see if I get it kind of straight and pin it where I'm going to do the carving, okay? Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just pull down the pattern like this. Just pull it down. You can see how the slits kind of help it conform a little bit. But I'm putting in a pin just so that it has something to kind of hold it against the pumpkin, okay? So it's got three straight pins in it. Okay, all right. So now what you do is you get something that you can poke with. So the set, the set of tools long ago came with this little poker thing, okay? It's a plastic poker. Now you could use uh, a uh, push pin, you know, like a thumbtack with a handle on it. You could use on any number of things that you want to transfer the pattern onto the pumpkin. Now, the other one that had the stencils that um, poked out on this set, okay, this set of patterns, these have stencils that come out. Their intention for you is to draw, to put this against the pumpkin and draw those areas that you're gonna cut out and they give you a marker in order to do that. I find it just as easy to poke the holes. So that's what I'm gonna do, okay? So I'll show you one up close. I'll show you one section up close and then I'll probably have to move it so that I can actually see it straight on. But you just use the little poker and you just, all you're after is piercing the skin of the pumpkin follow the line and go, I do it about every, I don't know, probably eighth of an inch. And you can hear it, poke, poke. So it's piercing the, the paper and the skin of the pumpkin. And then you just go follow the line 
like that. And that is what, let me see if I can show you. Oh, this may be a better shot. Yeah, okay. Brilliant. If I can keep it here, then you'll be able to see what I'm doing. But you see how it's poked, how it's pierced the, the holes there, right? And then you just pick up from a different part of the pumpkin pattern. And as in the case of any kind of stencil that is really patterned, you don't really see what it's going to be until it's really done, you know, and you get the light shining through it. So I just kind of hold the paper down and then just poke the holes. But you need to have them close enough together that they that it clearly forms the shape. All right, so there's that one. So you can see what I mean about pumpkin juice coming through and it starts wetting the paper. So if I get my head or my hands in your way, um, mea culpa. <laughs> and this is almost as good as watching paint dry, but I thought it would be fun anyway. In case you've never seen anything like this, I mean, if you want to watch fantastic pumpkin carvers, you watch uh, Food Network. Right now on Sunday nights, they're finishing up their... I've forgotten what they're what that series is called Halloween Wars I think and those guys have carved pumpkins on there now those are pumpkin carvers those guys know what they're doing now if you pierce the paper too close together you're gonna your patterns are gonna just drop out but, you know, if you don't intend to ever use it again, no big deal. Okay, so I'm going to move this pin over here to a different section just so you can see how the pattern, how that transfers the pattern onto the pumpkin. Okay? Bye, Teresa. Okay. So, we're just going to put a pin back in this. I'm going to try to find the hole that I had it in, or close to it. So it'll help hold it on. Okay? There's no tradition. <laughs> okay, Imelda. Okay. Well, I'm not a big Halloween person. Um, I mean, I used to be. When my son was little, I made all kinds of costumes when he was little. He was Sylvester the cat. He was a clown. He was a clown when he was three, which, of course, I'm sure he doesn't even remember. And he didn't want to wear that costume. Golly, I worked hard on that thing. And he, I made it for him for his preschool Halloween party <laughs> and he didn't want to wear it and I was just so disappointed anyway he did wear it but at first he wasn't too crazy about it we have pictures of him with a very sad face he was a very sad clown and then at one point I made him Sylvester the cat Sylvester had a stuffed head I mean it looked just like Sylvester the cat I was pretty it was pretty amazing and then another time he was an Ewok. So you could always tell, you know, what he was into. The Ewok was adorable. And another time he was a construction guy. So he wore overalls and, and tools and... 
know my hand's in your way, but I can't see it if we don't do this. You need pictures? You know, if I would, had been a good scrapbooker, I'd have my pictures organized, wouldn't I? My pictures are dumped in a trunk. A big trunk. <laughs> and I never was a good picture taker. You know, of course, when he was little, digital was not even a, a thing. Okay, you got the idea, so I'm going to turn it back toward me so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, and if you're not exact on the, the shape because it's round, it's not a big deal. Once you get going and you get things at the right angle, you can transfer this pattern pretty fast. Okay, so I'm going to switch cameras. And that way you can just, we can chat while I transfer the um, rest of the pattern. This is up pretty high. I'm going to have to stand up to do it, so we'll just do it this way. Okay. i got to get my knee up here so I can steady myself on the table. So, pardon for the unladylike position <laughs> so anyway I'm not I never scrapbooked the only scrapbook pages I have are ones that Dee Dee did I have a scrapbook for my cats that she did for me Dee Dee is inkwell or inky well depending on where she is on what social media and uh, so she did a scrapbook for the sponsors and uh, she did a scrapbook page for me of my granddaughter and me when we went to a book binding class together and I took pictures that I tweeted out <laughs> and Dee Dee snagged the picture and did a scrapbooking page for me. So those are the scrapbooking things that I have because somebody else did for me. Check in the chat a minute. Okay, just chat amongst yourselves. I'll rattle on while you guys chat. I'll tell you what, the rain seems to have stopped and the humidity seems to have kicked up. Because I am not exerting enough effort for this to make me sweaty, I'll tell you. at that for a minute. I'll be right back. <clears throat> My nose decided it was going to take a nose dive, sort of, so to speak. Dee Dee is really thoughtful. She is such a thoughtful person. And when it comes to scrapbooking, you know, I love the way that I love her style. I know there's many different styles of scrapbooking. And probably if I had started it when my son was little, I mean, truthfully, I didn't even know it existed. I'm lucky if I get pictures in an album. 
Now, I love looking back at our old albums and stuff, you know, when kids were little and all that kind of thing, but... And I always wish that I had things captioned and stuff like that. But honestly, scrapbooking seemed like it just was, a, you know, once I learned about it, which was very limited in the beginning, it seemed like it was um, a waste to me because it was so many supplies and, you know, and it's not. I'm not saying that it is. I'm saying when you're uneducated about something it can seem a certain way you know it seemed like a waste of supplies that you were putting so much stuff on a page you know and then it's like after I started catching it's like most things after you get the idea of how it works and that it's not just for the purpose I mean there's some some people I suppose that just do it to use up a lot of supplies or have it as an excuse to buy stuff but um, I don't think that that's at all the purpose I think the purpose is to create create and capture a memory and to do it in a creative way I guess hence the company creative memories huh your mom did captions in the photo albums you know it's like such a good idea but did I do it? No. I didn't do it for my grandchildren. Haven't done it for my own kids. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, we're coming down the home stretch here. We got one, two, three. We've only got like five more shapes. Can you hear the pumpkin skin as it goes tonk, 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 tonk? give you a different view nope that one doesn't work okay all right so what kinds of Halloween traditions, if any of you observe Halloween, is there any tradition that you're into? Oh my gosh, your mom used a black album and wrote with white ink and a dip pen. How creative was that? <laughs> that Christopher Lloyd portrait that Dee Dee did was amazing. I showed that to Claus Man. I made him come over and look at it, and he goes, holy cow, she is so good. <laughs> and that's the truth, isn't it? That is the truth. So I just use my fingers to kind of smooth out the paper. There's, I don't find any reason to, you know, cut it any more than, you know, like the four places that they suggest um, because with my fingers I can just hold it in place and if everything isn't just perfect it doesn't matter anyway it's a pumpkin I was up to my elbows and pumpkin guts yesterday let me tell you last night Clausman felt sorry for me he helped me gut the last the second one and then we separated the seeds out of the guts so that we could roast the pumpkin seeds. And I was looking online for different people's um, ways of roasting pumpkin seeds because I thought, you know, I'll just try it and see. And this one person I found, she's a blogger, I think, and she wrote, what captured me was the line that Google picked up and it was, the first time I did pumpkin seeds, I burned the crap out of them. <laughs> and I thought, okay. I'm going to, I got to see what this person has to say. So it was pretty funny. Funny blog. Okay. Pumpkin pattern is on. And that's all you use the little tool for is just to, um, 
<laughs> Mr. Bear went holy moly. Yeah. So that's all you use this tool for. It is just to transfer the pattern. So then take off, take out your straight pins. I mean, they held it just fine. Now I would recommend not using the same pins that you use on good fabric. And there we have our pattern transferred. Let's see if I can get it where you can. Okay, there I think you can see it. You see the ears? There's an ear. Here's another ear. There's the eyes. And so forth. And the whiskers. Okay, you really can't tell what these are so much until you get the pieces cut out and you put the light behind them. We set out dinner plates for the ones we, the loved ones who pass. Since the veil between the worlds is the thinnest, then we invite them to sit with us. Huh? Interesting, Rain. Interesting. <laughs> Lindsay had pumpkin soup. There you go. <laughs> Halloween was canceled last year. How did that happen, Jan? Or Fran? So I get Jan and Fran. Their names are both lady. Whoops. <laughs> Hit my mouse, so then I just messed myself up. Okay. All right. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to saw out. And I have different versions of saws. There's one big one and one small one. And then I have in the new set, I have um, even bigger ones. An even bigger saw. There's a bigger saw here, right here. And then a Mamba Jamba saw there. Now I didn't even use these. They're still in the package. So I honestly find that the little saws work the best for me. And so I most of the time go back to the smallest one because I get the most detail with it. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can show this to you over here without getting my head in the way. So I pick a shape that I'm going to do and I kind of keep my pattern available. Uh, we'll use the one that the old one from the original book. Sorry, I'm trying to get stuff organized here. We'll use this one from the book because here I can clearly see. And it says down here, it says, and they sometimes give you little tips on here. It says, drill the pupils, then carve the remainder of the eye. Okay, so by drilling the pupils, what they're talking about is another one of the tools they have in here is a little plastic, what they call, referred to as a drill. Okay, so it looks kind of like the poker, but it's actually a drill. And I don't know if you can really see that. Let's see if we can zoom in a lot. Okay, this is, whoops, sorry. This is what they call the drill. So it's got like a pointy end and then it's got kind of some paddle type extensions on it. Probably has some fancy real name but anyway so they suggest that you drill out the pupil and then carve the remainder of the eye okay so the pupil is the pupil is here and here so I'm gonna put this in and maybe you'll be able to see it I don't know let's see if I can get something to lean against it Oh, got you. I got you, Fran. Okay, so last year, Mary, Mr. Bear loves giving out candy to the little kids. Last year, we had a wee one who had to be encouraged as in poked hard by his older brother to open his bag so Mr. Bear could put candy in it. Wee one thought Mr. Bear was going to take out his hard won candy. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That is funny. All right, so we're going for the pupil. I'm going right into the middle of it. And then I'm going to just spin this drill.
And you can see it kind of acts like a drill. And kind of wiggle it around. And then when you pull it out, you have a nice round pupil, the beginning of the eye. So I'm going to do the same thing over on the other one, which is this one. It has kind of a rounded shape at the top. It looks a little bit like a comma stroke or a paisley. Okay, and I do find it necessary um, to have a towel handy, and I'm just using the like an old bath towel to keep your hands, give yourself something to wipe your hands off on because it's just it. The pumpkin guts are wet, and your hands get slick. Okay, so we have the two pupils, and then I use the little tiny fine saw and put it in there. And the, now there is, you kind of get a rhythm going. You can't make sharp curves with this. That is a fact. So your curves have to go gently. And then I just start pump, poking the pumpkin stuff. Whatever comes out, I poke it inside the pumpkin. And because this is a little bit bigger, I know you can't see it very well, but I need to turn it this way for a minute. But you just saw gently up and down, and you keep the pumpkin or the tool perpendicular to the surface of the pumpkin. So I'm just making it bigger, because if you don't have a big enough space, it doesn't have... It doesn't have room for the light to come through. Okay. So I just poke the stuff inside the pumpkin and then later I go in and clean it all out. Okay, so you can see that. And sometimes I go into the inside and just make sure I've got enough of a space that, um, that the light can actually come through. Okay, so maybe you can see that. Let's put a, I have another one of these. I don't use candles in them. I use these little battery operator, operated tea lights. These little battery operated lights. So let's see if you can, I'm trying to get it where you might be able to see it. Not really. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. All right. So, um, you kind of have to work from the inside and the outside. Okay, good enough. Good enough on that one. Let's go to the other one. Hey, Sandy. Okay, sorry if I don't respond to um, all of the chat. If, you, if you're chatting to me, make sure you put it in... Um, caps so that I'll see it. But when you do this, you don't push hard. This is like if any of you have ever worked with a scroll saw, it's like it's kind of that idea where you can't push it very hard at a time. Okay? So we got two pupils going. Alright, we'll work on this eye over here. 
the other part of the eye. So I just take the saw, let me back out a little bit. So I take the saw and I enter one of the perforated areas, trying to keep the saw as straight to the pumpkin as possible. You don't want it to tilt, because if you tilt it, then you start not getting the, um, you don't get enough of the pumpkin flesh cut out. So you just literally saw, and you go from dot to dot to dot. And when you start with your pumpkin, you want to make sure that you've hollowed out enough of the of this flesh of the pumpkin inside. You've thinned the wall behind what you're going to carve down to like an inch. And they tell you that, you know, in the instructions. Messy business, people. It's messy business. Okay, so you can see the light coming through. All right. <clears throat> You think I'm going to be here for a week? Well, like I said earlier, <laughs> I said this is akin to watching paint dry. You guys say that you don't mind watching paint dry, so feel free to come and go. If you got to go do something, go do it. Come back. I'll still be working on it. I'm trying to, to keep it in such a way that you can see what I'm doing. Which may or may not happen. But don't try and turn corners on don't try to take the curve too tightly with little saws because if you do, you're going to bust the saw, which fortunately I have extras. I thought it would be fun even after this was carved to put some paint on it, but I probably won't do that truthfully, but I think it would be fun. You could make quite a little work of art with doing these, and there are people that that's what their whole life's work is, is carving pumpkins and gourds, and they do some incredible, incredible works of art. Highly you know, highly reliefed kind of things. And you can tell whether it's connected by whether it's going to release. And sometimes the pieces pull out better than they go in, so, you know. <coughs> Most of the time I poke them into the pumpkin But if you need to, you can pull them out. Okay, so there's one eye. I need to clean a little bit more of this out. Okay, so you can see his eye right there. Okay, a sponsor eye has shown up. All right, so we're going to, um, I'm just going to work on this left side of the face here, and then we'll, uh, I'll go over to the right side after I get this done. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to work on the ear. 
This is pretty gentle, so I'm going to switch to the the <clears throat> the more the less tight the curve is, like the straighter the curve, the bigger the saw you can use. I'll tell you, the year we got into doing this was, it was a lot of fun. And we must have carved, I don't know, five or six pumpkins. But I'll tell you, it is more challenging to do this when you're trying to do it where people can see. <laughs> That's the challenge. I'm going to need a nap when this is over with, folks. <laughs> but you just carve from one dot to the next dot. It's not really carving. You saw from one dot to the next dot. And if you get to where you have a little bitty space, switch to a different tool, different size tool. Okay, so we got part of the ear. Alright, so we're going to go to the rest of the ear here. You should paint it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I was just reading the chat for a minute. All right, so I'm going to get it started. Now, when you're up close to, you know, where you don't have much area here, you got to be careful. So you can't use a whole lot of pressure with your hand or anything. And so one of the tricky parts of doing this is to learn how much pressure you can use with the the tools and how much pressure you can use with your, your hand supported against the pumpkin because some of these cuts get to where they get pretty delicate and if you get off track just put your saw back in and go again But I find having the little pin pricks in the skin really helps to kind of keep my saw tracking from one place to the next. And it probably would be the it would be fine to use the marker style of doing it too, but I just find that I got used to doing this. Between the saw and my voice. Let me tell you, I'm working up a sweat over here, people. <laughs> I'm glad it's calm for you guys. I may shed my outer shirt here in a minute. Get down to my t-shirt. I knew it would be messy, so I just put on old clothes. All right, so can you kind of see, I'm trying to keep it in view of the camera. Can you kind of see how, how it works? And any of you that have ever done this kind of stuff, I'm sure you have gone out about your day doing many other things by now. But I just thought it would be fun, you know. And I don't ever do anything for Halloween with you guys, so I thought it'd be fun. Now, if you have issues with your hands, I will say this is not the kind of thing that is real easy to do. Um, because there is some, some uh, stress involved on your hands. I'm just looking at my design here. I wasn't... 
I wasn't so good right in here at transferring my pattern. Okay, and I'm going to switch directions. And it's easiest for me to work towards myself. Now, when you put your hand inside the pumpkin like my left hand is, you got to really uh, watch that you don't rake the saw across your fingers accidentally because I'm going to tell you, it will cut you quicker than a minute because you're using quite a bit of pressure going on there. Okay, and when it's done, you can pull it out. Now some of the, some pumpkin carvers will do things like this and they'll flip out, you know, bits and pieces so they'll create, you know, a relief kind of thing with the pumpkin. But, you know, I just take it out because I want the, I want the color or the light to show through. All right. And if you get a bunch of pumpkin guts in your way, then you need to go in and kind of pull them out. I mean, they look kind of spooky and creepy, but they also obstruct the light, so. And if you have a spoon, a metal spoon that needs to be fairly strong, you can scrape from the inside too if you need to, you know, get more stuff out of your way. Okay, so there's an ear with a little pumpkin guts. Okay, so there's an ear and an eye so far. Okay? Teresa, you're a sweetheart. Teresa, did you get your package yet? If not, it should be there. You're closer to me than anybody else that I mailed stuff to the other day. That's funny. All right. So we're going to come down here and do this little section under the eye. Now you have to be a little careful because you've already, I've already reliefed out some of this. Well, let me do this little section up here first. There's a little section up here above the eye right there. The little, the little guy. I can't believe I kept, I haven't put Jean to sleep. Maybe she's sleep typing. Good. Maybe it'll still come, Teresa. Okay, so we've got that little piece above the eye. So you can see it really doesn't take forever to do this sawing. You just kind of get in a rhythm and just sit there and do it. Last night I was watching TV doing it. It's easier for me if I have this in my lap. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. Let me do that and turn the camera because I'm tilted at a weird angle. So, give me just a second to reorient things here and put a pumpkin gut cover in my in my lap. <laughs> Doesn't that sound nice? I'll put a pumpkin gut cover in my lap. Okay, let's see how this works. If it doesn't work, I'll go back to the way I was doing it. This is, a, this is a regular operation here, people. This is a regular operation. Okay. Okay. So we're going to see. I'm going to end up with pumpkin stuff all over my shirt before it's over with. <clears throat> 
All right, but you got the idea of what I'm doing, so I'm going to make it easier for myself. <laughs> Listen, it's all about me, people. It's all about me. And then every so often I'll turn it back around so you can see the progress. How's that sound? Does that sound all right? It sounds great, Barb. Thanks. She says as she talks to herself. Teresa, I bet your boys are going crazy over the Royals <clears throat> playing. We probably shouldn't start that discussion because we got Canadians here that aren't going to be, aren't going to be, they're on the opposite side of the fence, you know, with the Royals playing the Blue Jays. Okay. So I'm going to work on whiskers here. After I get the whiskers done, then I'll show you. So I'm carving pumpkins. Claus Man's carving Santas. I'll tell you. we got a regular operation going here today. He told me last night that if he'd known I could carve, he'd have had me carving Santa Clauses. I said, no, this is not carving. <laughs> this does not count. This does not count as carving. <clears throat> hey, Jamie. Yeah, if you haven't seen Zandra... Um, I just read what APG Jamie said. If you haven't seen Xandra Scraps to Beauty, if you haven't seen what she's doing with the shaped album that she's doing, a Christmas shaped album, I'm telling you, that girl has got skills when it comes to doing those books. Skills. I don't even think about doing stuff like that. I don't even think it up. Okay, this is the last whisker on this side, so we're going to get this done, and then I'll show it to you. But as I started to say earlier, if you've got issues with your hands, this may not be the thing for you to do because um, it is a little stressful on the on one's hands okay so here is here are the whiskers there's the eye there's the ear on half of the head Kansas City's ready for the game I bet they are too Okay, so we're going to the, I'm going to go back up to the top of the head and I'm going to work my way down. So I've got a little spot up here between the ears. got to make sure that the pieces and parts that you poke out really do come out. Sometimes they hang up. Okay, so we got the part up here between the ears. Um, I'm going to keep working down the face. I'll do this ear last, this ear piece. I'll do it last. Just because. <laughs> Rain's talking. Okay, that's good. 
The one thing you got to watch is keep your finger back behind the the um, handle, the little ledge on this handle, because it's easy to get your hand down on the blade. You don't want to do that. That's a bad idea. If you're working with a little saw like this, you don't want to do that. Keep your hand up on the handle. Readjust your hand. Even though it might feel awkward, readjust your hand so that you keep your fingers up there because like I said, you I mean just because this is supposed to be something that kids can do does not mean it's a, an entirely safe thing to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, and when you need to rotate the pumpkin and continue carving, I, it's best if you do this toward yourself. I really believe it's safest, and also that's about the only way that you can see what you're doing, is to pull, be cutting toward yourself. Have any of you guys tar tried carving those pumpkins that you get in the craft stores? You know, they're, I don't know if it's styrofoam or what it is. Have any of you guys carved those? I have never bought one of those, and I'm just curious if, you, if anybody has done that. Is Darcy here? Oh, no, you're talking about Darcy teaching somebody to do something. Oh, there she is. Hi, Darcy. I can just imagine carving, you know, those pumpkins that are kind of styrofoam-like. I can just imagine what a mess that would be. Probably worse than pumpkin guts, isn't it? Surely one of you guys has done that. Okay, Fran has, and it's the same way, um, you have to wear a mask because of the dust. That makes sense. Okay, so you can see that he's coming along here. He's coming along. There's a little tiny space here for the eye, so I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to be very careful here. Very careful. So Fran, did you cut it with the same kind of tools and saw it just like this? You don't like pumpkin pie, Jamie. What's the matter with you? Jamie, come on. <laughs> Cheryl. It's un-American not to like pumpkin pie. <clears throat> it's un-American. Okay. <coughs> Moving on. Moving on. Oops. 
What time of day is it? It's only 2.30. Good grief. I thought I'd been doing this for hours. You just do it from dot to dot. And if you get confused as to what the shape is, you know, what you're cutting out, you got to stop and look at your pattern. Did Race ever show up? If he did, you guys need to ask him about his pumpkin carving prowess. Because let me tell you, he can flat do some cool stuff. Probably hadn't done it in a long time, though. I like pumpkin pie, too. Actually, what I make now is pumpkin custard. So it's basically the pumpkin pie filling without the crust. I haven't made that in a long time. It's really good. This little, this piece right in here is pretty detailed, so I'm going to have to be a little careful here. So far, I haven't wrecked anything, so there's still time. <laughs> there's still time to mess it up. But the thing I found is if you just go slowly enough, you will triumph and have a really cool pumpkin in the end. Now, mind you, I don't do trick or treat. <laughs> so, I. These pumpkins are just going to be, these pumpkins are decoration for you all. Because I don't even do the trick or treat thing. Okay, come on. I got something hung up here that didn't want to turn loose. you got to go back and all right see I was I was speaking out of turn here a little bit ago saying I haven't messed it up yet there we go there we go got it That's where we are so far. This was the piece I just cut out. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I agree, Rain. All right, so let's continue on. All 
And as I said, when you um, get less and less, well, let's say it a different way. When you get more holes poked in it and more sections removed, you it becomes a little more fragile. So you want to make sure that you're kind of watching how much pressure you're putting with your supporting hand, which is my left hand in this case. You want to be a little careful. pretty good. So can you see now this is the section that I just took out. So I'm going to come over here. I've got a little bit of the mouth and a little bit of the whiskers and then we have the ear. So any of you watching the recording, um, you can just like whip on to the end and see the finished result. So you don't have to you don't have to watch me carving, sawing. It's not carving; it's sawing. I keep saying it's carving. It is not. It is sawing up and down, up and down, up and down. Got that. Okay, we're coming over to the whisker area. But the more perpendicular you can keep the saw, the better, because that puts less stress on the blade when you start really pulling and tilting the saw that you get um, you're in danger of snapping that blade off. If you've ever done jewelry sawing with silver with a jewelry saw you'll know what I'm talking about. Using a jewelry saw to cut out silver or copper or brass or whatever nickel silver any of that it's the same kind of thing. You need to keep that saw as perpendicular to the work as possible. Okay, two whisker spots to cut out here. You think the sponsors will approve of their likenesses? I'll tell you what, when Jim and Vicki were here a week ago, I thought they were going to ruin my cats. I'm not too sure they didn't. Because they held those cats 
and Muppet followed Jim around like she was attached to him. It's like going and visiting somebody who has a baby and you hold it all day. <laughs> and then you leave. Okay, so we got all the whisker stuff done. Okay, I know he's a little hard to see. At an angle, you can kind of see it a little bit more. Oh, there's Vicki. Here I am talking about her. I didn't even know she was here. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, and whiskers are done. So the last piece we have to do is the ear. I didn't even know Larkspur Vicky was here. That's who I'm talking about. I'm giving her a hard time. And she's here to defend herself. I took her, well, we went into this really nice quilting fabric store while she was here. And Jim was with us. And she was walking around. I mean, it's a lovely store. They have beautiful fabric. And she'd, every little bit, she'd say, oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> I never think it's bad. I always think, ooh, this is my kind of place. I did get caught. I sure did. That's what happens when you start talking about somebody. She told me the other day that she was going to paint a pumpkin for her granddaughter. Now, I would like to see a picture of that. Because knowing Larkspur Vicky, whose website I showed you last week, about the beautiful watercolors, that pumpkin is probably pretty amazing. Varnish them. They don't stay forever. These things don't, if that's what you're talking about. Okay. You got to just keep turning it so you can see, so you have a good angle for um, working the, working the cut. Because I've got a really thin area here that I'm coming up on. I gotta I gotta pay attention here. Coming in the home stretch here. Okay, now I gotta get this to release here. Got it. Okay. Now. Get all the pumpkin stuff. 
stuff off my lap and off my hands and off my clothes. All right, let's put, we'll can the lights here and put a candle in it and see if we can get it to show up. My candle is, my, my expensive candle isn't working. Can you believe that? We'll put in another one and see if we can. Claus man, could you turn off the lights over there and lower the shade? See if we can get it to show up. The slide. There we go. Can you see it? Yeah, let's do that. Can you see it? So there's that one. Okay, can you see them? Hopefully you can see them. We'll put another candle in that one. I'm trying to get them lit well enough that you can see what they, you can see how they really look. Push the button. Okay. Twice. Okay. For the slower. There you go. That'll drive you crazy. <laughs> so, so this one that's in here has a strobe light. It's a red strobe light. You can set it to do different, um, set it to do different things. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so this one I added the red, the red light to. So we now have, I mean, they do look remarkably like the sponsors, I have to say. <laughs> if you've been hanging around here any length of time, you know the sponsors. They're two fat Siamese cats that let me stream. Aren't they fun? So we're just taking a moment. Now see, Inkwell should be here. Inkywell should be here so that she could admire the cats. I'm trying to get them, get them both so you can see. Hopefully you can see them. I think they're cool. I think they're just really fun. Yeah, on camera the red light is really good, so. Anyway, hopefully you can see them. Well, that one, you that shot, you're just seeing the candle flames. <laughs> the idea is you don't see the candles. Okay. They are fun. Okay, so we've looked at them enough. I'll turn the lights back on. Uh, 
Okay, well, I've lost one of my lights. Okay. Okay, so there you go. Pumpkins. <laughs> Cali Cat's looking too. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys thought those were fun. I thought you'd get a kick out of it, maybe. You know, something different. Something we've never done here before. And that, you know... And that's saying something, because we've done a lot of stuff in the last five years. So let me um, put them off to the side. And we'll chat for a few minutes. But these little tea lights were very inexpensive. And you got, I don't know, I got six. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I got six of them for, I don't know, five dollars or something. So anyway, we'll set them over there and get rid of the pumpkin trash. Bye, Cheryl. Thanks for stopping by. Glad to see you. There is just nothing quite as slimy as pumpkin innards. Do you know how that light... Would you see... I couldn't get it... Oh, okay. I never used that, so... Well, I did. I understand that. Because I stayed it under it. Yeah. Okay. So, any questions about... Um, Carving a pumpkin the easy way. It's not my usual stream, that's for sure. I'm a tidy pumpkin carver. Well, that's only because I already had the guts all taken out. <laughs> that's the nasty part. <laughs> that's the nasty part. All right, so there they are. Slimy and sticky is right. It is right. Okay, so I'm going to let the um, sponsors come out and join the party. Let me get my the rest of my stuff put together here. And then if you just if you just let this this was the pattern that we used. If you just let it dry out, you can use it again, or you can do what I did today, which is, you know, just make another, make a copy of it, and uh, do that, you know. And that light pad that I used is really cool for doing that. So I was glad I found my carving tools, my pumpkin carving stuff, and it just all goes back in a bag, and it'll wait till next year. All right, there you go. Pumpkin carving. And we'll let the sponsors come out to see what they think about it. That'll be interesting.
They weren't charging out the door. That's something's wrong with the sponsors. <laughs> ah, Barb, will you be baking the pumpkin seeds? Yeah, I am. Um, here he comes. Are you coming up? You coming up? You must have been sound asleep, buddy. Were you sleeping? Hmm? Were you sleeping? How did you do them, Cheryl? That's what I want to know. How you did them. You coming here? Come here. It does look a lot like Chance, doesn't it? I mean, when you get it, you got to get them until they are in just the right position. You really can't tell what they are. You coming up? Come on. Come on. Come here. We want to look at you. We want to look at you. Come here. Well, come here. You must be lazy today. We must be being lazy. Get up here. They want to take a look at you. Let's look at you. Let's see. Does it look like you? We'll put the light back in it. See if we can see. I don't know whether we'll be able to see it. I've got too many lights on, probably. You can almost, you can almost see it. Can you lie down so they can look at you? You boiled them for a few minutes and then dried them on paper towels and then baked them with salt. Huh. Cool. Okay. So what do you think? Does it look like him? <laughs> Does it look like you? Does it look like you? I think it does. Does it look like you? Hmm? He's so busy. He's busy. He doesn't care. I'm surprised that he didn't react to it. Honestly, I thought he would be probably intimidated by it. But no, he doesn't care. There's no room for you today. Charlie's on the floor complaining. Barb's cats are really unique. <laughs> exactly, Vicky. <laughs> Barb's cats are unique. Somebody's been giving you a bath on your neck. Either that or you rubbed your head on the pumpkin. I think somebody gave you a bath. You coming up? You coming up? There you go. Get up. So the other night, I don't know if I can show you this. I'll try. I don't know if you can see this or not. But right here, he doesn't want me to show you. Right here, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that little, can you see that? That discoloration there at the end of his tail? Right there. That right there is red paint. It's Delta Ceram Coat Crimson Paint to be exact. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Cheryl. I'm probably going to follow your instructions because <laughs> I haven't made them before. I mean, I did it once, but ages and ages and ages ago. So I don't know. I was looking up recipes. Yeah. So Chance, so Chance is now sporting Delta Ceram Coat Crimson Paint on the tip of his tail because he was uh, helping me. He was helping me when I was painting, and he jumped up on here, and uh, he literally jumped up on the table and started whipping his tail, you know how they do, wagging his tail, and it got right, it just went right through the top of the freshly 
splurted out dollop of paint. So I had to grab him before he f flipped his tail around and painted everything else. <laughs> yes, yes I did. It is a mess, weren't ya? And he didn't care one bit. Didn't care, didn't care, didn't care. It was fine. It was just fine with him. So anyway, all right, Charlie's disinterested in the whole thing at the moment. So um, I think we're gonna sign off and I uh, probably will be back late tonight painting. I don't know, it depends on if anybody else is, paint, is uh, painting. If anybody else is on, if they are, great. If not, I will probably jump on late tonight and uh, paint Santa's. As you can see, the workshop is in full bloom over there. I showed it earlier, and it is in full bloom. So thanks, everybody, for joining me, and uh, I will see you either later tonight or I'll see you next week. Okay? Yeah, natural, cat, natural hair brushes. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think that fast, Fran, to put a canvas under his tail, let me tell you. So... All right, I will see you guys either later or next week. So have a, a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time. So have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, each and every one of you, for joining me. I really appreciate it. <laughs>